Hi guys. Um, it's been a while. I'm sorry. Um, I just got just the sweetest uh, comment on an older um, update video and it reminded me that I really need to do another update video. Um, I did have other videos planned. I had the unclo boxes come and go and um, it just, the timing didn't work out. <laughs> it was very hard to um, film them. So now I'm just coming at you with a general overall update and I tend to ramble so I'm gonna try not to. Um, so I even put my list with just the little notes as all of my updates um, go in. I'm just going to break it down into um, health, medical update, weight loss update, and general life update. <laughs> uh, update number one, yes, I'm wearing a bathrobe. <laughs> it is the best bathrobe. It's got a fuzzy hood. It's so warm. This was a gift from um, from my best friend Melissa for Christmas, and I love it. And I'm working from home today, so uh, I'm just gonna wear this all day. Okay, so again, the rambling. I'm sorry. Let's get into it. Um, first, we'll do the medical and health update. I do not remember the last time I did an update, so I'm sorry if I kind of um, backtrack or skip around too far um uh for a synopsis uh, i have um, mixed connective tissue disease which is an autoimmune disease um i also have ehlers danlos syndrome um, which is a genetic connective tissue disorder so um i will mostly be talking about um the treatment of the mixed connective tissue disease, excuse me, <coughs> um, because the EDS is its own thing and there really isn't any treatment for it. Um, but the autoimmune disease, there are treatments. So uh, I have been on a um, self-injectable medication called Benlista now. I've been on it for 12 weeks. I give myself a shot um, every Friday and uh, it's been going well. I haven't had any um, follow-ups with my doctor yet. It's like most medications, it takes a good, you know, six months to even um, start to work. So um, another couple months and we'll, we'll do blood tests and see if it's helping um, with my inflammation levels and all that jazz. Um, but um, this particular medication has some pretty nasty side effects or can have many nasty side effects. I actually joined a Facebook group of other people who are on this medication just to sort of talk to people and know what to expect. And the horror stories are pretty real. Um, but almost every single person that I talked to said that despite their side effects, um, even as nasty as they could be, that this medication has still been life changing for them and they would never choose to go off it. So um, that made me hopeful. <laughs> but I have been so so lucky. I want to knock on wood, knock on something. Um, I have to yell at my dog because she's obsessively licking. You might hear it in the background. It's so gross. Um, so where was I? Side effects. Um, I haven't had any. The, the worst I've had is a little extra fatigue, um, like a couple days after I take my injection. And... Um, I've had like a few bouts of uh, wooziness. Um, I had like full vertigo for like a day or two, um, but I don't think that is related. I'm not really sure, but 
Um, it hasn't happened again, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but I have like this uh, sort of sense of wooziness. So I'm not quite dizzy. I'm not really unstable or faint or anything like that. I just um, don't feel right. <laughs> like I don't, I feel kind of out of my body a little bit. Like everything's a little bit um, slower and wobbly. Um, it almost feels like what I imagine it would feel like to have low blood sugar. Um, my mom has reactive hypo hypoglycemia and um, it's similar to the way she's described that feeling. Like she gets sort of shaky and kind of woozy and a little bit out of it. Um, but I have been checking my blood sugar um, when I feel like this to see and it hasn't been um, super low or uh, super high or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I'm not too worried about that either. I just need to be like aware of if it's happening. <laughs> I want to be safe and not driving and um, all that. Um, oh, and I have developed a um, allergy to hand washing. <laughs> because the medication itself uh, is one that, um, it's an immunosuppressant, so it deliberately suppresses your immune system because when you have an autoimmune disease, what it means is that your body, um, your body's immune system is attacking itself. It's attacking the healthy um, cells instead of attacking, you know, the bad ones if you're sick <laughs> or anything like that. Um, so what this medication does is sort of stop your immune system from working so that it can't attack yourself, but that means it also can't attack the bad stuff. So I have to be super, super extra careful about germs and um, avoiding them. <laughs> so I have been, you know, obsessively washing my hands way more than I ever did before. And um, I started to get the, these like rashes on my hand, on the back of my hand. Um, and they would, after I would wash my hands, they would raise up and look like hives, like welts sort of. And they would get itchy. And then the swelling would go down and there'd be little pink dots um, that just never went away. But every time I would wash my hands, um, they would raise up and I don't, I don't think my camera's good enough to show you because like they're still there, all these dots here. They're not itchy right now. They don't feel weird. But if I were to wash my hands, um, all of this would raise up red and right here and um, weird. But it turns out it is from just washing my hands. Um, you the skin sort of develops an allergy to the soap and um, hot water, um, mostly the soap. But uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, I read that the best thing to do is to switch to using um, alcohol-based um, cleansers instead. So like um, antibacterial, oh, I can't think of the word, you know, like the gel. You know what I'm saying? Um, so like at work, um, I had to put a big tub of the hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer is the word I was thinking of. Uh, I had to put a tub of that in the bathroom um, so that every time I went to the bathroom, I wouldn't have to wash my hands. I would just use the hand sanitizer. Um, so that's like been annoying because, uh, you know, I need to stay as germ-free as possible and for me that meant you know staying away from people and especially children i wear my mask um if i'm like in a big group or in public um and i wash my hands a lot so now i just need to wash my hands with hand sanitizer a lot instead of soap so that's it so nothing nothing major um other than the Benlista, oh, I have also 
been on a calcium channel blocker, which essentially is a like a blood pressure medication, but I am taking it not for my blood pressure, but for my Raynaud's uh, phenomenon, which is the thing where um, the blood vessels in your fingers and toes and sometimes nose and ears <laughs> uh, completely close um, due to cold or stress or for me, anything at all. <laughs> um, and they just completely shut off and my fingers will turn bright white and it's very painful. And um, it was happening for me um, often, maybe 70 to 80% of my day it would be activated. Um, and it was getting very frustrating, sort of overwhelming because when it's happening, it not only is, you know, painful, but um, it's also numbing. So I couldn't really do anything with my hands. <laughs> and uh, you need your hands all day. So when you're used to having hands and you don't have hands, it's annoying. Um, but I've been on this medication for, i say a few months now four months maybe and uh, it's definitely helping we upped the dose once um, and I would say that the rain knots now is affecting maybe 15% of my day versus 75% of my day which is a huge improvement and I'm really pleased about it because it was getting pardon the pun it was getting out of hand for sure so that's great great news. <laughs> um, only other new symptoms besides the overall like wooziness, dizziness thing, the allergy to the hand washing, and then I've gotten a lot of new um, nerve things. Um, it, for a while I was getting like at the base of my neck I would get like a patch of numbness um, if I would like move my head forward or uh, if I'd be like in a certain position, like in bed, it's really bad, but I like to lay on my stomach, you know, with my, with my head propped up watching my iPad. <laughs> and in that position, it would really, um, it would just be like tingly numb at the base of my neck. Uh, and now, um, that is still there, but now if I move my head to the right, my whole scalp goes numb. So, uh, I don't know what's going on there. I am not too worried about it. I have talked to my doctor about it and he's just like, ooh. <laughs> because they're just, um, when you have a lot of inflammation, it can tend to mess up your nerves. So it's something that could, it could be something, it could be some sort of spinal stenosis or something, um, but it most likely is just the inflammation doing weird things. So um, I do have an appointment with the neurologist again. I don't remember when, but um, you know, I will mention it to him, of course. Um, that is it for health stuff. Next is weight loss. Uh, I, as you can probably tell, I have not changed in weight very much. I am still plateaued. Um, I'm sorry that my nose is, it's doing that thing where it feels like it's running, but nothing's coming out. Does that happen to you? <laughs> it like feels like I should just be dripping and, but there's, there's nothing, so. Uh, I apologize. I'm disgusting. So weight loss and plateaued. I am still um, just about 40 pounds down. I have about 80 pounds left to lose and I am pretty stagnant at the moment. Um, haven't been eating the greatest and um, I just feel a strong desire to sort of get remotivated. Um, I don't feel like I've strayed too much, like off, I haven't gone off the rails, but I want to 
still just kind of straighten out the caboose a little, if you know what I mean. Uh, I've been listening to a book called The Obesity Code by Dr. Fung. Um, and I really like it. I am only two thirds through it, I think, because I've been listening to the audiobook in my car. Um, but I really like it. It is not super new information for me, um, but I really like how much research he has put into it, and um, it is encouraging me and inspiring me to clean up my diet even more. Um, I definitely want to move more towards eliminating sugar and also artificial sweetener, which Eliminating sugar is one thing. I've done that before. It's not that hard for me. Um, but I love my Splenda. And uh, yeah, listening to all of his research on um, artificial sweeteners and how they react in the body. And uh, that bothers me. <laughs> so, uh I'm, right now, I'm going to say that I will be dramatically reducing, nearly eliminating sugar, um, you know, like added sugar, and dramatically reducing artificial sweetener, <laughs> because I don't use a ton, but I use two packets of Splenda a day in my coffee or tea or whatever beverage, hot beverage I'm having, I put two Splendas in. Um... And I won't do that. <laughs> so I might go down to, um, you know, I like black coffee, so that's fine. I'll just go to black coffee. Um, and then every now and then I'll just have my two Splenda if I want something real sweet. But I should, I should lessen it. So uh, I do credit the, the book for that. And um Again, that's called The Obesity Code, and it is really interesting. It talks a lot about, um, like, the history of um, the obesity epidemic, especially in America, and, um, like, what sort of phases our standard American diet has gone through over the years, and what, do what doctors have recommended um, for weight loss and how that has changed and how that was shaped over time and it's pretty interesting. See Vaughn, see, come here. He's grumbling because my chair is making sounds like a bird. Buddy, it's okay. Okay, so um, what else, weight loss? That's it, um, my only real goals are that to um, clean up my diet a little bit. And I want to be able to set a goal for getting back to personal training because I had to stop um, over the winter. Actually, it's been a while, maybe almost a year. Um, I was having so much trouble with my hands and with my disease in general um, that there were very few exercises that I was able to do. And um, I didn't feel right uh, paying to, to do those, you know, two exercises that I could do at home. Um, but I really miss my trainer and I really miss um, improving my strength. So I really hope to get back um, probably in the spring. So um, that's a goal of mine. And then lastly, I'm sorry this is going on forever, is uh, life updates in general. Um, biggest one is I got a new car. Very excited. <laughs> um, if you don't know, my old car, I loved it so much. It was a uh, convertible, hardtop convertible, and it was my baby, and I loved it. <laughs> and I still love it and I miss it, but it had a lot of issues and it got to the point where it was um, dying often and it wouldn't start and I'd have to get it towed, but my garage, multiple mechanics, <laughs> um, have not been able to diagnose what the problem was. And so I just, for my sanity, for reliability, um, I had to get a new car. 
and I really wanted an electric car because I have a pretty short commute and it just the idea of not having to go to the gas station just delighted me. <laughs> um, so uh, that's what I did. Uh, I actually ended up getting a, it's a plug-in hybrid, um, which means it has a electric, <coughs> excuse me, engine. <laughs> oh my God. And, I'm gonna guess that's a package. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know how much you caught, but there was a package being delivered and a ruckus ensued. So, uh, oh, that's my robe. Um, so, yeah, um, it's so it's half electric car, also has a gas tank. So, perfect for me because I'll never have to actually use the gas in the gas tank but it's there if I run out of charge on the battery because I am a very um, anxious person <laughs> and some things that really sort of trigger me uh, is feeling like my car is unreliable feeling like I'm going to break down like I'm going to run out of gas even though I've never run out of gas in my life <laughs> Um, and it's just amplified over time. Again, dogs have a lot to say. I'm sorry. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, my car anxiety sort of amplified over, <laughs> over the past, um, few years of having issues with my car and its reliability and leaving me stranded multiple times. So, uh, yeah, I love the idea of having um, the gas as a backup uh, because the uh, electric will get me about 50 miles, which is more than enough to cover my short commute every day, plus errands, all that. Um, but if I need to go on a longer trip, then, and I can't find a charging station, then I will have the gas and the gas will get me another 400 miles. So very cool. I'm very excited. Um, it's not a beautiful car. <laughs> it's a Honda Clarity, in case you're wondering. Um, it's not ugly, but it's it's not as pretty as my old car. <laughs> um, but this is the first time that I've sort of bought a car not out of passion. <laughs> Um, which feels kind of nice too, to have bought a car that um, is more practical for me, that has almost everything that I want in a car. It just, um, yeah, it's not beautiful and it's not a convertible. So there are downsides. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's exciting to me. I don't love having a car payment now, but I am leasing it for three years which means that my car payment is actually a little bit smaller. And um, at the end of the three years, I can maybe, you know, opt to go with full electric or um, or keep it. So anyway, <laughs> new car, very exciting. Um, what else? I have a short um, weekend trip coming up to Charleston, South Carolina, which I have never been before. And my friend Jess and I are going just for like a long weekend and I'm very excited about that and uh, work work is fine I have missed a lot of work so far this year due to my uh, illness I guess um, but you know I am doing my best and my work is my office my company is amazingly um, accommodating to my needs and I really appreciate that. Um, I have been told by many people how lucky I am to work in such a uh, humane and caring office and I absolutely agree. Um, I still, I hope, <coughs> excuse me, I hope that, you know, in the future 
that I my health will not be as bad as it is now. Uh, I know that it will go through flares and it'll go up and down, but it would be really nice if I could um, get back to being a little bit more reliable um, at work. So, but it's good. There are big changes happening um, as we are a company that is growing steadily and quickly. Um, so that's exciting just to sort of learn new things and um, keep up with it. So work is fine. Um, last thing are my dogs. As you heard them, they are still alive. Um, they are both getting old and they've been kind of a lot um, to handle lately. Um, there's just been a lot of like senior dog moments of um, going to the bathroom in the house, which was never really an issue before. And uh, Chai, the corgi, she's just uh, a little bit, I mean, she's completely deaf now, a little bit blind. Um, she gets very disoriented easily. Um, and she's got really bad arthritis, so her short little legs kind of leave her at times. Um, I have to carry her up the stairs sometimes, but they're doing well and they are seemingly happy. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't love getting up at three in the morning to take them outside, which I never had to do before. But, uh, you know, it comes, it comes and goes. Uh, their needs and I will give them whatever they need. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to shut this off. I think I've gotten to like 30 minutes and I wanted this to be like a 10 minute update. But I ramble and I'm sorry, but it just is what it is. So I hope that you are doing well. Um, I definitely will still have some more videos coming. I have a few items from Tori that, that are on their way. And of course, another Dia and Co box in March. And um, that's it. So I will talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> Do you like it though?